Hey, good morning, everybody. So last night was a full moon. How I know? Because I was up at two in the morning, <laughs> smoking a cigarette. Just had some kind of like interlude with a very old member of my Jilly Juice crowd. And what's going to be happening, I know, with my old members of the Jilly Juice crowd is some are going to be coming and going and not really keeping up, but drop in and not see the full scope of this evolution. So they don't really know what's going on. And that's the thing right now with the Jilly Juice protocol is that it is so evolving right now because we're, we're in the, still the state of research, but it's actually coming together and there's going to be a conclusion to all of this. Like, and that's probably what's been plaguing me you know, while I'm writing this book is that I've been having to write and rewrite and write and rewrite because new evolutions of awareness and how I'm going to word things. And so I think I had an issue with trying to word, how do I tell people about how long they stay on the Jilly Juice, what it actually is doing. And sometimes you just don't have the words for it because you haven't had the experience to see, to juxtapose against what somebody else is experiencing when they're not on the Jilly Juice. And so, so here's the thing, okay? Last night, you know, I was, yes, getting on somebody who was responding to Jolie, who was saying she's off the JGs now, thank gosh, because she's underweight. She's having problem with eating food, which means that her body needs to eat the food and she should not be using J juice to do anything, but just preemptively get the body into an evolutionary response, in an immunological response, which means that you open up your ionic gates. You allow all of the hormones and all the viruses that were held at bay, or at least all the evolution from the viruses held at bay to come to surface. And that means it's the antibodies, it's the both pro and con, okay? Both the agonists and the antagonists, the pluses and minuses. This all has to do with pluses and minuses. Chili juice is a plus, but if you do so much plus, 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 then it'll turn into a minus, like you will be the minus. Okay, so you have to understand it's about balance. But that's a hard thing when we've been taught to go from one end of the spectrum to the other. And so so last night, someone was responding to Jolie saying, oh, you should stay on the J-Juice. It's so powerful. And it was just such an out of context type of response. I'm like, she's not following me. And then, yes, I come to learn that, yes, this person is a yoga instructor and also in the holistic world, though they say they found they find ways to justify why they are in the profession they're in. But no matter what, when you're a licensed therapist in whatever. Now, I understand speech therapy. OK, fine. When somebody has issues with speaking because of um, of predispositions, then, yes, I, I get the speech therapy. But why did that have to happen to begin with? Because there's anomalies in the genetic line that they're not able to take on learning how to speak. And so, and so anyways, um, I get that. For children, I get it, okay? Because I had people in my world that did take on speech therapy. But as far as the therapists out there that are doing modalities, dealing with people who are at a very accelerated state of decline and they're in the Eastern philosophies, I, I just can't... Like, I'm not going to kick you out because I know you're in there, but if you are becoming boisterous and you're not following along the lines of what I'm doing, then I'm going to I'm gonna have my, my, my antenna, my radar up, and I'm going to try to gently explain to you why your comment was not appropriate or try to, you know, correct you in some way without being totally, you know, like, upset. But if you don't get it and you argue with me, that's when I don't have the patience. So if I counter anything that you say in my group and you start arguing, you're not evolving because every single change that I make is from an evolution from the pink salt to the white salt. I should not have anybody, you know, um, countering my countering me on that because there's a reason why I had to know that people were actively bringing up preemptively bringing up all the evolution in their body and the pink salt was not strong enough. However, not everybody can handle, you know, but that's when you take a little bit and whatever. So I'm not going to worry about the pink salt versus the white salt. But it should be the white salt. But you do what you got to do. I, I don't really care. You'll figure it out. 
So I, so I release people when I know they're really not, they're really not going to evolve and they are boisterous. Okay. If you're hanging back, but if you defriend me and you've been friends with me before and you're in my group and I find out then I'm just gonna take from the, out from the group because you're not active and you're not my friend. So that's just a double whammy. So done. All right. But here's the thing. This is what I figured out. So pain is evolution. Okay. So the trinity of pain is evolution. Okay. And what brings on pain? Well, viruses, that's why they're promoting the uh, therapeutics because it's a lesser version of the virus supposedly out there, but there's so many different viruses out there. There's no way you're going to actually, you know, be a hundred percent, you know, reduce the pain and reduce the immunological response, but it's supposed to be a lesser version. At least that's the theory. And it, you know, it makes sense. Okay. When you have, you take a, you take a condensed version of like coffee and you add water to it, then it's going to make the lesser version of the coffee not so strong, right? That's the, that's the intent of the therapeutics is to lessen the condensed aggressive version of the actual real thing out there. Okay. So the trinity of pain and evolution is inducement. So what causes then pain and evolution was well, a change in the environment. So that's a virus. That's a second party harm to oneself. So if somebody hits you that hurts, right? Okay, if somebody hits you, you know, you feel pain and then you evolve and you deal with that and adapt to it and then heal from it and say, okay, don't hit me again. Okay, and then the third is the J-juice. Now, that's not self-harm. It's just a change in your biochemistry. A virus is a change and a virus can come in, into the form of a therapeutic, yes, or it can come into the form of a person who has the, the data, the genetic lines or the, um, the, the viral proteins that has that data that's going to try to come in and change your programming. Okay. And so there's the three trinities of pain and evolution is, is the pain and evolution inducement. So what Jilly juice does for all the freshmen. Okay. And that's why I tell my guys that tell my people that who've been on it for a while, just to get off the J juice right now, just get off it and deal with the viruses, deal with the food and deal with your environment and deal with the pain a hundred percent. So the trinity of the JJ freshman is what it does is it's, it's the evolution is, of course, the top of the capstone, but it retroactively forces you to evolve to the level of what was it retroactively evolves you from the point of when you were channel blocked by the medical holistic industry, by all the different holistic allopathic channel blocking modalities. OK, so it retroactively forces you to evolve. And then it proactively stops you from devolving yourself. That's the whole point of the Jilly Juice is it stops you from proactively devolving yourself, which is what's going on with the therapeutics, which is what's going on with all the different modalities in the Eastern and Western philosophy. Because when you're taking part in all of these modalities that are, that at this point in this environment, people can't afford, okay? When you're siphoning people's energy, whether it's through crystals, whether it's through um, massage, whether it's through Reiki, whether it's through getting operations. Okay. When you are doing all of these different modalities, you, you're taking away the energy from the person. So what Jilly Juice does, it retroactively forces you to deal with the evolution that you've been suppressing. And then it proactively says, okay, now you must deal with pain. You can't hide behind the Jilly Juice with pain because remember, Jilly Juice brings it up but you do so much of it in reaction to pain, then it will take it away. No different than any kind of cure out there. And so it's that careful balance of, okay, it's the plus side, but it will turn into a minus if you stay on it, using it in reaction to pain. And I saw people in my group doing that because that's what they've come to know. And that's what people have been using because chili juice is very powerful. It can bring up evolution and it can destroy evolution just like that because of, because of your intention. And so I had to figure out how am I going to say this and how am I going to put this in my book? And, and then that's when the whole thing with the obese and skinny, when someone is obese, they can afford to be on J juice to bring everything up and to work through all the excess substance that has caused them insulin resistance, caused them all these different diagnosable conditions. They get to proportional size. They still eat the food. Then they get off the J juice and they deal with their environment. And then you realize that your poop has, has also been programmed. That's why they take stool samples, fecal samples, whenever you have some kind of disease, because they want to see what kind of programming you have in your stool. Well, imagine that is the type of insulation that has so many different programs that conflict with each other. 
And so the whole thing with the waterfalls is to reset your body so that way you can now finally evolve to the current level of the environment, also catch up with the evolution from years ago, and then make sure the food is programming your poop and programming your body in alignment with the current viruses and whatever predispositions you had to deal with from the past. And it could have been from the last 20 years. It could have been from the last 300 years. You have genetic lines that have predispositions that have been uh, <clears throat> channel blocked like, you know, a thousand years ago. And you didn't know it because you were carrying that genetic line for years and years and years and years and years. Okay. So the trinity of the JJ freshman is that the evolution pain is retroactively bringing up the, the evolution that you suppressed and then proactively stopping you from using all the modalities out there to channel block you because you don't want to feel pain because that's why you're in where you're in to begin with because you've been stopping the pain, which is the evolution. And so then I realized the trinity of defense, which is the coughing, the mucus and the sneeze, and then the fever, diarrhea and barf, and then the cancer disease and chronic illness. You have three opportunities to get your shit together if you destroy your first lines of defense where you're drying up the mucus you're taking your tonsils out and you're taking all your different turmeric and honey and elderberry syrup and all these different things so you don't feel coughing you don't feel mucus and you stop sneezing then you just destroyed your first line of defense and now it's going straight to the fever the diarrhea and the barf and when you stop doing that and you don't even do the diarrhea you try to stop that with modium, or you stop try to stop barfing with whatever and you don't replenish your electrolytes on your own or go to the hospital then what's going to happen is then you will trigger the cancer disease and chronic illness and autoimmune disorders so i figured out the trinity of defense which you probably can't read because it's backwards or maybe you can is that yes you have first third first second third lines of defenses the fourth line is you're in palliative care because you're not going to want to dig yourself out of that hole because that hole is so deep and so painful and jolie you know exactly what it was like what it's been like and it's, it's not easy eating the food supply and getting off of J-Juice. Yes, you saw how powerful J-Juice was helping you with the food, which is good. You guys need to do the waterfalls at least, you know, for someone that's obese, they do as many as they need to and eat the food supply and drink the water until they get to proportional size and deal with the pain without trying to mitigate it. But though people I know are going to use J-Juice or they're going to use antibiotics to deal with the pain. I know that's reality, but obviously better to use J-Juice for pain than to use an antibiotic because at least it's giving you life but you don't want to overdo it with J-Juice, okay? But someone who is underweight, someone who has nothing to them, they can't afford to use J-Juice or antibiotics for pain because there's nothing to them. They have no substance. They have to be able to build up the substance. So that's why when I say drink coffee to get the poop out, and Jolie is like, oh gosh, four cups of coffee a day, which you could probably do like a cup of coffee or you'll figure it out. But four cups of coffee a day on a body that has like, hardly anything to it yeah it's going to make it's going to accelerate and cause more action potential more than you're willing more than you can handle and so that's why now there is a there is a difference on how you use jelly juice based upon your body size not even your predispositions because you can have an obese person and a skinny person both deal with diabetes and so how do you tell them to do j juice when they both have the same disease but they have different different compositions to their body well, the person who is skinny will do the J-Juice, get the waterfalls, and then be done and deal with all the food and dealing with all the symptoms, and it's not going to be easy. They're going to have to keep, every time they have a pain, they got to keep eating. They say, eat your way through a virus. Remember people say that you, you just feed a cold? Well, there's something to that. When you're sick, you feed, okay? And so when my husband, when he was sick, you know, I, I made him yesterday like a bunch of stuff in the morning. You know, what is it? Tater tots and eggs. And and I had the, the beef bouillon broth to help give him the salt, the sodium and the water, of course. And then the vegetables and the soup and the noodles. Um, but he actually is dealing with the second line of defense because he does not have the first line of defense. It was destroyed in his childhood. And that's what I see in a lot of men out there is they don't have the first line of defense. They only have the second line of defense. And then, you know, if they don't figure it out, the third line of defense is going to come to surface. And what I'm afraid of in the future is that you're not going to get that chance to have that third line of defense. That if you suppress the first line and the second line, then the third line is not going to exist. And that is your insurance policy is the cancer, disease and chronic illness and autoimmune disorders. And so when you're alive, you have a chance to reverse all that and then get on a life trajectory, not a death trajectory. But the reason why back in antiquity, 
why they put everybody in a cure to state of decline is because they wanted balance. You imagine, like every time I get hit by a virus, I'm tired. I have to take a nap. Maybe, you know, I have uh, constipation or maybe I have, um, I don't know, feeling of hot and cold. Okay. And the temperature rising and falling, I'm you know, maybe I'm coughing or whatever, right? And so how they're able to control humans to keep them in a cured state. Because remember, cured means that you don't feel any evolution. But you can't possibly be cured in an environment so dynamic and you're partly water and you're exposed to the dynamics of the environment. So you're going to be then not only cured state of decline, but a decline. Same thing. You're not going to be in a cured state, but you'll be in a decline as well. And then how they measure your life is how they can keep your stable decline so stable and still keep producing. And so now when you're evolving to all these different viruses, yes, you're going to be on then not a cured state of, of, of decline or incline. You're going to be evolving and it's going to be ever changing. And that's where the instability, the unpredictability comes in because when you're constantly trying to evolve to 7 billion people, it's then chaotic. I mean, companies can't rely on their, their people if they're not like consistent. And I was never consistent. I was always trying to evolve because I came from um, a deficit and I've been trying to keep up and I'm serious. I've been trying to keep up in body, mind, and spirit. I've been trying to keep up intellectually with the world. I've been trying to keep up physically with the world. I purposely put myself in an environment such as this that is very aggressive. Ohio is aggressive because it has extreme seasons the people here are are built like brick shit houses, and they don't mess around. And it's a it, and it's and it's it's a very tough environment, Ohio. But if you are strong enough, you can handle it. But those that aren't strong enough to really handle aggressive environments, they then move to Florida or they move to California, which is what my parents did. They were from the East Coast and they moved to the West Coast, where things were a bit easier, sunshine and innovation, and and everyone's just like all happy because they're at the beach, right? And they look all cute and they figured out how to mess with their hormones so they can kind of stay in this cure to state of decline like Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She spent 100 or 90, 89 years doing what she's doing. You know, the, the King Tut or King Ashkenaten, whatever, lived to be about 90, 91 years. Okay. And so you can get a lot of gifts and a lot of um, innovation out of a person in a cure state of decline. And so that. Is, and so there is really nothing nefarious that was going, that's just the human condition. However, not everyone's going to do J-Juice. And we're all, we always have people bearing children every day in the system that is going to help deal with their evolution. And they're going to control their evolution. And it is what it is. But those of you that know J-Juice, think of it as a gift. Because you will have the chance to figure out how to deal with your evolution and then right now we're in a society where you can work for yourself. You can start your own business. You don't have to work for someone else where they expect you to be up every single day at the same time producing this much. And if you don't produce this much, then you're fired and you're always under this stress of like, I got to perform. And so now with, with, with the J-Juice, you have the ability to be strategic in how you stay alive in our society. But you also have to be um, aligned and you have to be be evolve to the level of your society. You cannot play, I'm going to eat this kind of food game and I'm going to only do this and live off grid and do all that. There's no way you're going to be able to deal with our society when you have not evolved to the level of it, which means that you have to learn how to evolve and then be strategic in your survival. And so I freaking get it. Okay. And so that's why people have an issue with the, with, with J juice because they don't want to feel pain. And so people have been using J juice and that's why I don't see too many testimonies because they're either in a cured state of decline. So there's nothing going on or they just got off it all together and went back to the holistic industry, which I've seen in my group. Some of the members are going back to bark, which is like some kind of like herbal remedy. They're going back into the system because they can't deal with the evolution. And I understand they don't belong in my group because they've had their chance. They were with me when I was playing the, the for and against, the anti this and the pro that. And as soon as I got off of that train, they jumped off as well. And that's fine. It was an agenda and it was, you know, they, there was a specific 
reason why they joined me because I believed in their politics. But as soon as I got out of their politics, then they, they, they're like, okay, well, JJ doesn't work anymore. So I see also the, the superficialness of people that follow JJ's too. And just because you sent me customers doesn't mean that you can still promote your agenda and not evolve. I don't need customers. Customers are people that don't know what the hell they want and they want someone to tell them what they want. When I'm a customer to somebody, I have no idea what the hell I want because there's like 50 million options. So then I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to take responsibility for my decision. So I'm going to tell the salesman, tell me what I should get. So that way I don't have to make a decision. And so I don't want customers. That's what the holistic allopathic world works with. They want people who are ignorant, who want someone to tell them what they should do. That's not the J-Juice world. I don't want customers that want me to tell them what they should do and how they should feel and what they should believe in. If that's the case, then go back to the holistic allopathic world where you can get paid to do that because you will be on that person's nuts 24 seven when you want someone to tell you what to do. You want someone to tell you what to believe in. You want someone to tell you how to do shit. And so I'm finding a way to universally speak to the world, which has been so freaking difficult, but I had to go through the COVID. I had to deal with my husband being sick here for two days. You know, I mean, my dog, you know, she's she hasn't peed the bed or had any seizure in the last two weeks. Thank freaking God. Okay, so she's evolving. She's staying with this, with this environment. And this environment's intense. I still haven't had my period since April. Whatever that means, I have no idea. But I am pooping. I notice that my body holds on to poop when it is going through an evolution with the virus. And so and so now, you know, we're realizing we don't need as much, okay, as far as um, survival. You can live off of top ramen, off of jelly juice, I guess, if you really need to, as far as fermenting, um, only just to bring up stuff, but not to use it forever. So you can live off top ramen, you can live off of um, vegetables. You live off of off of bread and donuts and all that stuff, and you'll still survive. And you don't need as much as space unless you really want to. You can live off the food supply in the grocery store. You don't need that much to survive. You'll realize that with the J juice and with the J juice protocol and the J the J juice mentality. So it's not even just the J-Juice. It's the J-Juice mentality because some people think that you're on the J-Juice all the time, forever, for everything. No. Now we have to start changing our words and say, okay, I'm on the J-Juice mentality. The J-Juice mentality is the fact that you don't use anything for pain, which is going to piss off a lot of people in the allopathic world. They think I'm some religious nut that says, okay, you know, you're one of those religious types that say no medical, no anything, just let the person suffer. Oh, no. You have J-Juice at your disposal because J-Juice can be a cure. You have the antibiotics at your disposal. No one's saying not to. But the whole intention is when you're dealing with an evolution, you have to deal with pain. As soon as you go through an evolution and you try to stop it is when you start getting on the decline. Because then you're actively taking something to stop the pain. Every pain is evolution. And so every virus out there is evolution. Every single anything out there, like you get hurt, Okay, and your body's trying to evolve. That's an evolution because there is an action which someone hits you and then your body is reacting by evolving. Pain is evolution. Okay, and so instead of pain is healing, that's not anymore. It's pain is evolution because it is. Whether it's a second party, third party hurting you or whether you're hurting yourself or you're bringing up a change in your biochemistry. Okay, or you are retroactively bringing up predispositions that you have been suppressing through the medical holistic channel blocking. And the whole thing with the channel blocking is then, yes, suppressing all of those times where you could have evolved, but you chose not to because you didn't want to feel the pain. Well, all of that's going to come to surface. Every single action that was that was forced upon you, whether someone hit you, got in a car accident, or you got that operation, or you whatever, you took you know these specific illicit drugs, as soon as the body's able to finally actually deal with that and evolve the body, then you're going to feel everything from those times. So it's a lot of ways it's going back in time. You're going back in time on the J juice because you're going to bring up every single evolution that you've suppressed. And some people's journey has been pretty insane. And so they're going to have to deal with a lot of stuff that they're probably not prepared to deal with. 
and you know, you have to know your own history and know that you can handle it. And you must have the body to handle it. So that's why in the beginning you can do J juice a little bit to get yourself in that mode and to get yourself understanding the whole point of J juice. And then yes, you don't want to rely on J juice to have you poop. Okay, either you use your own fingers or you drink a bunch of coffee. And your colon's going to be stubborn because it is not going to want to change the programming. If you don't want to change your programming, what makes you think that your colon wants to change programming? You know, so it has to be a transition. And then Jilly Juice is a powerful force to really force them to change the programming. <laughs> okay. And so that's why it's got a lot of crazy rap. And so anyways, um, so that's the whole point of the, so now I got to write about this and put this, you know, in a very logical form. So people understand that when you destroy your first lines of defense, then you go to the second line. And then when you destroy that, then you'll go to the third line. And then that's point of no return. And a lot of people are actually going to reach the third line of defense come this fall and come this summer because they have destroyed their first and second lines of defense. And so the body's only choice is to go to the third line of defense and they're not ready for that. And that's why palliative care is the fourth line because you're not going to do anything to help yourself. That's when everything is foregone or a foregone conclusion. All right, so I'm going to go do my thing, drink my coffee and figure out how I'm going to write all this shit. <laughs> All right, bye.